Papua New Guinea, land of the unexpected. Something new or someone new every day. From the mountains to the sea and from the forests to the towns, Divine Word missionaries have the privilege of living and working in a fascinating variety of situations. Climatic conditions vary greatly in Papua New Guinea, from the tropical coast and the humid swamps of the Sepik River, to the temperate mountain valleys and cool, cloudy areas high in the mountains of the highlands. Some confreres have access to good roads and modern conveniences with electric power and telephone. Others live very simply using canoes or walking between villages. Some live in community, others alone with the people of their parish. The symbol of the bird of paradise appears on the national flag. The bird of paradise is one of Papua New Guinea's many natural wonders. Papua New Guinea has five million people and these people have hundreds of distinct languages and cultures. Yet there is another side to life here too. Committed Christians are challenged by problems such as corruption, moral and material poverty, HIV and AIDS, and various forms of violence. SVDs serve in many of the 19 dioceses in Papua New Guinea. We are part of a church that is very much alive, striving to face the challenges of a young nation in the modern world. In recent times, we participated in a general assembly of the Catholic Church in Papua New Guinea, lasting over one and a half years. After much discussion and dialogue, the Catholic Church has developed a national pastoral plan, and SVDs play a significant role in helping to implement that plan as we move from mission to a self-sufficient local church. There are many apostolates. The majority of our members serve in parish ministry, from isolated rural areas to urban apostolates in the towns. One of our communities is at Dirima in the Shimbu province of the Highlands. There are five uh, members in the community. Uh, each one of us came from different nationality. I myself from Indonesia, Father Wilson is from India, Father John Le is from America. Originally he is from Vietnam but he is an American citizen. And seminarian, our OTP seminarian, Father Gidon is from Ghana, Africa. Whenever I go out and people try to talk about me or maybe ask me questions, I always refer to that community, uh, community as my home. Because even if I go out and I say, Gideon, why don't we go I mean, to a different uh, place? And I say, no, I want to go home. And they always get confused and they say, are you going to Ghana or going to Kenya? I say, no, I'm going home because I belong to a community and that is my home. And we belong to a family, so we call ourselves brothers. So I always enjoy that community. And I can say that it is the best place, especially for young men who are preparing to join our community to have experience from that place. I was assigned by, by SD Provincial, SD Superior, to be a uh, parish priest here, assigned to Dima SD community. I was very happy because the people is very, very good with us in doing uh, work. And also we have uh, in the parish, we have a parish council, we have a and also we have communion ministers 
all church leaders and all different groups here in the parish. So we have three groups so far. They really work hard and support the parish, parish church. So I I can say that uh, slowly, slowly the people they feel that they are church. Maybe before they feel uh, church is missionaries, they are from outside, but now they feel they are church because they also took part in the uh, parish work and the church work. Vietnam was a mission country, and we received the faith the, of Christ, uh, the believing of Christ from the Western missionaries. And now we are able to share, to bring this faith to the people in the mission. Other parishes are in towns, such as Erema in the capital, Port Moresby. Some of our brothers work in fields such as healthcare, mechanics, carpentry, electronics, farming, and medicine. Others work in the educational field, in pastoral centres such as Holy Spirit Centre at Par in the Diocese of Wabeg. So here in this pastoral centre, at the moment we are having uh, courses and training for future church leaders that they may be able also to share that faith and experience when they go back to their own villages, to their own communities. And I think uh, at the moment our task, our job is uh, to evangelize and also to train others so that they can be able to hold on to their faith and share that faith to others as well. In Madang, we have Divine Word University. The annual graduation is always a special event. And by virtue of my authority as chairman of the University Council, I confer the respective degrees, diplomas, and certificates on those soldiers. So people from all over Papua New Guinea and the lecturers also from all over the world, which is kind of characteristic also from the divine, for the Divine World Missionaries, internationality. not really very difficult because uh, my my background is not far from from the, the traditions here in Papua New Guinea 
And besides, there's always the challenge. The challenge that this is a very young country, and a very young country in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of religion. And there's a vast, a very big uh, need for, for help from, from missionaries to develop this country uh, and tap, and tap their own uh, potentials that they have here in, in Papua New Guinea. <laughs> There is the Bible apostolate and communications. Yes, I will celebrate Trinity Radio FM broadcasts to people in the Diocese of Mount Hagen. Over 30 years ago, Father Frank Mahalik started the Word Publishing Company, which produces the only Talk Pigeon newspaper in the country. Talk Pigeon is the language used in everyday situations by the majority of the population. Several of our members are at the Melanesian Institute, which specializes in pastoral, cultural and socio-economic teaching and research. Some work in formation, and others teach theology and scripture at the seminaries. New missionaries have their introduction and first language studies at Divine Word College at the National Seminary. The students here help in speaking to them in Pidgin, trying to help them speak this language better. On voluntary basis, we propose to them if they want to follow us to some of our pastoral areas. And from this experiences also, it's part of the language training. So it's part most on the culture and also on, on the language. The SVD mission began in Papua New Guinea in 1896 at Tumlao Island. Father Eberhard Limbrock came from the mission in China to lead the first team which landed on the north coast in 1896. They were followed by many other pioneers, Father Franz Kirschbaum, Father Alphonse Schaefer, Brother Eugene Frank, Father William Ross, Bishop Leo Achfeld, to name only a few of the hundreds of missionaries who have gone before us. Today, our mission comprises a team of 23 nationalities, with men from all continents joining the growing group of indigenous members. One Way Mission has developed into sharing as our own national SVDs serve in countries such as Ghana, Jamaica, Brazil and the Philippines. In recent years we've given more attention to forming communities with several confres residing together, working in teams, sharing the work of several parishes, for example, in Timbunke, on the Sipik River. My experience in Timbunke, I can say it was like a, a mirror where I could see myself and where I could see how I, I act. And while having that mirror, I came to realize that sometimes I have to be a little bit uh, flexible. I, I cannot go always uh, pushing my ideas and pushing the way I think and trying to forget a little bit that okay I am Mexican it is the 
the thing that it brings a little bit life, different. Uh, so the internationality brings something new into the community. But I came to realize that, okay, sometimes I have to, to forget a little bit that, that my way of thinking, my way of expecting things uh, done by someone or by a member of the community had to be considered from other point of view. And it, in that regard, it was a big challenge. Always when I came from a patrol, a three-week three week patrol from a very remote area from Amboin, somebody will be there waiting for you, welcoming you, and the table will be set. You will have some food, and you will be happy to, to eat what you, 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 you could not eat uh, in three weeks where you were in, in patrol visiting some communities. And... This is what I, I came to, to realize and experience. It was really great. There are many apostolates we would like to expand. Areas of particular need at the moment are formation personnel, youth work, counseling, ministry to people with AIDS, and communication specialists. There are also needs in the field of accountancy, teaching at the university level, and various forms of research, particularly in the social and cultural fields. We need men prepared to do pastoral work in difficult and remote areas. Uh, if you have a, some contact with, with the Lord, yeah, then you have that uh, feeling or, um, that uh, even if you are alone, there's always somebody with you, yeah? And then it helps a lot, yeah? especially the prayer life, yeah? It helps a lot. The experience of serving in Papua New Guinea most often leaves a deep impression on the life of an SVD. When I came and I witnessed some of the things in Mosby, I wrote back to my friends back home in Kenya. If you want to know the truth, you have to come here and experience things for yourself. And don't just sit down and read from the internet and, because most of the things from the internet may be deceitful. So we need to come and experience life here. Okay, I think what, uh, what I'd like to see missionaries coming to Papua New Guinea is to be uh, filled with the spirit of spiritual uh, missionaries that they come to share this uh, word to others and those others uh, by leaving their examples so they can also follow uh, their footsteps. We see that the future of our society in Papua New Guinea will include the witness of more international communities and a more professional approach in our ministries. I will be very happy uh, that uh, uh, new missionaries or experienced missionaries or old missionaries that we can work together as a team and we can really bring up uh, the, the values of Jesus here in this country. In our SVD PNG vision, we state that journeying together with the church in Papua New Guinea, we give witness to the kingdom of God. We especially promote unity, harmony, and mutual respect among ourselves and all the peoples of this land. We would like to invite more SVDs to come to Papua New Guinea and join with us in helping to make our vision a reality.